Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today we're starting off over here in the city area that we planned out in the last video of last week. And not much has happened here in the meantime. I've been making a couple of small changes here and there, working a little bit more on the detailing for these paths. You can see that I've done a little bit more with the stone slabs and stone blocks just to kind of like border the paths lightly a little bit. We might even choose to build like lamp posts and stuff on these squares just to light the area up a little bit later on but aside from that I've done a couple of pieces of terraforming here just to fill in some ponds so that we have a larger area with which to build and aside from that I decided to let this project just kind of sit for a little while this week because we're going to be doing some other fun stuff involving the adventurous side of Minecraft. We're going to be doing a little bit more of the adventure and a little bit less of the building this week. So I hope you guys are excited for that. Today's episode is going to be all about returning to the end and fighting the dragon again, because despite the fact that we vanquished the dragon in our last attempt, and that was the first time we'd ever fought the dragon, it is possible to respawn the dragon. And today, I'm going to show you how. Now to respawn the dragon you actually need something that we've made before but for a different purpose and I'm talking about end crystals. Now let's grab some ender pearls out of here, we probably need four for this. Let's grab some blaze powder which we should have in plentiful supply here, we'll need to break out one more blaze rod for that. And let's turn all of these into eyes of ender. To assemble an end crystal you need an eye of ender, a ghast tier, and seven blocks of glass. And I'm actually only going to bring three ghast tiers with us because we're going to go to the nether and I'll show you a really neat trick for getting more ghast tiers out of the ghasts that you're fighting. So where are the glass blocks? They're gonna be in here, fantastic. Let's grab a few of those as well. We'll pop the eyes of ender in there, the ghast tiers in there, surround the top with glass, and there we go, we have three end crystals already. Now let's pretend that that was my last three gas tiers because I, like I said, I'm going to go to the nether and I'll show you a neat trick for getting some extra gas tiers so that you can also have some potions of regeneration as well as as many end crystals as you want. The first thing I'm gonna do is get down here into a nice wide open area and there's a ceiling above us but we should be able to see any ghasts that spawn around here. And ghasts are relatively few and far between when you're looking for them but they're the kind of mob that turns up in the inopportune moments, the times when you don't want a ghast to appear, that's usually when a ghast appears. So I'm just going to walk around a little bit here and hope that one spawns in the local area. The most important things that I've got with me right now are a bow and my sword, which has looting three. The looting three is going to be really important for what we're about to do. Now I can definitely hear a ghast around here. Let's see if we can spot one. Yes, there's one down there. Okay, fantastic. Let's hopefully see if we can get down there without it despawning and as long as it spawns somewhere over the terrain yes there we go fantastic so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and not bat, bat the fireballs back at it but instead i'm going to shoot at it with a bow and then immediately switch to the looting sword in my hand like so and once I kill the ghast, the fact that I've got the looting sword in my hand actually applies to the ghast being killed. So you'll notice there is more than one ghast tier here, which doesn't normally happen. I've got three ghast tiers out of that because I switched to the looting sword right before the arrow actually hit the ghast in the first place. And that applies for pretty much any mob. It's not just ghasts that are affected by that. Basically, the weapon with the enchantments that you're holding in your hand kind of applies looting to the bow kill. I think the, the actual damage that the bow does is still the same, but you'll usually find me switching to my sword once I've shot at a ghast and I get way more ghast tears than you normally would. Now that's not the only way you can attack a ghast with a sword, of course. If you've got Elytra and you are feeling brave, you can always try flying at the ghast and swinging at it with your looting sword, which has a chance to hit if you are within the ghast's hitbox. But a ghast's hitbox is very small compared to the size of the ghast itself, so you're going to have to get up close and personal to it. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to f uh, fly around here to see if I can actually find a ghast to demonstrate this with. There's one now. I'm going to go for it. Yes, oh, we got it with a sword. Oh, got to duck the fireball. Yes, fantastic. And did we get any drops from that? Uh, doesn't look like I've collected any. They might have fallen down here somewhere. Let's drop down and see. Let's have a quick check around here first, though. But you'll notice sometimes when you kill a mob, the experience they drop and the actual drops from the loot will turn up in different places. And that's usually because the 
experience drops out of like the body of the mob once it's finished kind of despawning after you've killed it and i have a feeling we might have lost those gas drops oh is that them down there fantastic let's go and grab them but then yeah the experience drops out of the body as it's despawning like the thing that you've just killed but then the drops will usually arrive exactly on the spot that you kill them depending on whether or not you have knockback on your sword or a punch on your bow that also tends to vary a little bit so if you picked up the experience but you can't find the drops look around look a little bit further towards the spot where you actually killed the thing because that's more than likely where the loot drops happened so we managed to get three gas tears from that other looting sword kill as well which means we now have six gas tears which is enough to make an awful lot of end crystals now so i'm actually going to try and make as many end crystals as i possibly can let's make a few more eyes of ender let's see how many of these we can get we could probably manage one more but that is 12 end crystals which is going to be enough to respawn the dragon three times the dragon Dragon can be respawned with fewer crystals, but technically speaking, you're supposed to do it with four. So I'm going to take four into the end and we can figure that out once we're there. I'm also going to grab a little bit of paper to replenish my firework rockets because I just used a whole bunch of them to travel around the nether. So returning to the nether, let's take a trip over to our stronghold portal where we're going to return to the end and I'm finally going to show you how to respawn the ender dragon. Oh, and there's a chance to collect some more gas tears on the way. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> let's see how many we got this time. Is that just the one? Nope, looks like it's more two. Fantastic. Looting sword always works. Although I'm not sure if that bug is exclusive to Java edition or not. So bedrock players, don't take my word for it. Give it a try though, it's fun. So here we are back in the end once again, and you'll notice I haven't made quite as many preparations as I did the previous time around. We've got some glass bottles, we've got our end crystals, but this time I'm wearing some elytra with unbreaking and mending. I've got a bunch of fireworks, I've got my sword and my infinity bow, I think I'm pretty well kitted out already. The dragon fight should never really be taken lightly, it is still a fight that is fraught with peril, but we should be able to handle ourselves a little bit here. So with our end crystals here, you'll put one on each of the flat sides of this bedrock portal. The idea is to place them in the center of each of these flat sides so they are placed evenly around the portal. And once we place this fourth one, we'll be committing to the dragon fight. This portal here is going to deactivate. The towers are going to regenerate one by one, which is quite spectacular to watch. And then the dragon will respawn in the middle here above the bedrock portal and we'll be back into the fight. So let's do this. Here we go. <laughs> it's always exciting to take the dragon on again. And the, yep, that's going to regenerate that crystal and then the next one. And it does them all in sequence like so. While they are regenerating like this, they are indestructible. So there's no point going and trying to destroy the crystals right now. All we really need to do is wait for them to completely finish respawning and for the dragon to appear here in the center, which it's going to do once that last tower connects. And here we go. Dragon number two is here. <laughs> and we cut ourselves... Another achievement for that, we got the end again. Right, well, we know the drill at this point. This is going to be a pretty standard dragon fight. I haven't brought any additional projectiles or snowballs or anything, but I've got my my infinity bow, and I think I'm probably going to do all right with that. Look at that. We're damaging the dragon already by shooting the crystals off the tops of the towers. And don't forget that now, if I actually switch out to my fireworks, we have the ability to fly as well. So it's going to be a lot easier to get up here, get a different perspective on this dragon fight, and take out these towers. You just got to be careful to still make sure that you're not too close to the end crystals when you do this, because they are still incredibly volatile and can explode you. <laughs> In fact, it can be a fun challenge to try and do this entire fight without touching the ground. Once you've got Elytra, it's actually worth a try. I'm actually going to land on top of this cage and just be a little bit careful that the dragon isn't going to shoot a fireball at me because we need to take out these iron bars here without touching the crystal. If I stand here and break that crystal, I will almost certainly take a lot of damage. I'm not entirely certain if I would die from that, but it's not a chance I want to take. So how about we take a few more of those iron bars out really quick? I don't want to anger the Endermen who are on the ground here as well, so got to be a little bit careful here. Boom, there we go. Oh, that was, that was a close one for a second. I think the iron bars actually protected me from that explosion. Let's go around for another shot at this one. Oh, almost, almost managed it there. <laughs> it's a good thing we've got an infinity bow. I would be wasting so many arrows if this was a regular fight. There we go. That's all the crystals taken care of. And now we can zero in on the dragon. Let's see if we can take it out while we're flying here in the air. That'd be a lot of fun to try. Of course, we won't be able to use arrows on the dragon once it's hovering above the central portal. So we can always come in for the usual amount of sword hits. Let's aim for the back. 
And while we have the opportunity, I might actually switch out to some of these glass bottles and take some Dragon's Breath with us, because the Dragon's Breath is actually worth having as a potion brewing ingredient, which is something I didn't cover in the potion brewing episodes previously, but I figure it might be worth a go. So let's see if we can bottle up some of that Dragon's Breath while it is spitting it from the portal. Fantastic. We'll take a few bottles of that with us. The dragon is a noisy beast as ever. Let's see if we can take it out in midair again. Here we go. <laughs> Let's chase it down. Whoa, there we go. We got knocked back a little bit by the dragon that time. Let's see if we can get around here. These endermen are trying to do the same thing as me. They all want to have a go at the dragon at this point. The dragon has aggroed a few of them, so that's probably a wise thing for them to do. And there we go. That is dragon number two dealt with. Let's see if we can grab a little bit of this dragon's breath first. It's managed to kill a couple of the endermen for me as well. So we have some spare ender pearls. Fantastic stuff. And once again, we get to collect up a little bit of XP. But this time around, you will notice that the dragon doesn't drop nearly as much XP as it did in the original fight. It's enough for us to gain a few levels, and we're pretty high level anyway, so the experience doesn't really go as far. But it's not going to be enough to get you to, like, level 80 or anything like that this time around. You'll probably find that it only gets you to about level 12 if you started from nothing. Not so much experience drops each time you fight the dragon, <laughs> at least not as much as the first time. But there we go, that is a second dragon fight done, and as you can see, another end gateway portal has opened up. This one is actually right next to the first one, but it's pretty much random where they spawn. They don't tend to spawn in like a specific order. You'll find that sometimes they spawn completely on the opposite side of the central island. You'll find that sometimes they spawn next to each other like this. And ultimately you can end up with 20 of these gateways around the circumference of the end island. But if you want to explore a vast quantity of the outer end islands in search for elytra and end cities and that kind of stuff, you will find that generating a few extra portals thanks to a couple of extra dragon fights, will be a very worthwhile thing to do. Now, I've just aggroed a couple of endermen, so bear with me while I deal with these guys. There we go, get taken care of. Now, one of the fun things about the dragon fight is that it actually, when you respawn the dragon, it actually regenerates all of the towers of obsidian. So I can mine as much obsidian as I want out of these towers. I actually mined a bunch out of the bottom of this one where I wanted to make an enderman shelter on the opposite side of this tower, and it's completely regenerated the obsidian, which is a fun way to farm obsidian. I mean, there is really no fun way to farm obsidian because it takes so long, but if you want to bring a haste beacon here, mine out all of the obsidian as fast as you possibly can, and then regenerate the dragon and regenerate the end towers as a result, you will find yourself with a decent supply of obsidian. So this is probably the ideal time to gather some more of that if you want it for nether portals or just for builds in general. As an example, I'm actually going to mine out the entire bottom section of this tower. So there's a massive chunk and it's just going to be floating above that just so you can actually get a chance to see the tower regenerating when we respawn the dragon in a second. Because I brought eight more end crystals with me, so we might as well do the fight a couple more times. There we go, just by mining out a two block tall section of this tower, plus a few blocks here at the front, I've managed to get myself 84 obsidian. <laughs> and so we're going to completely regenerate this tower now by respawning the dragon once again. And you can respawn the dragon as many times as you like. Even though the maximum amount of end gateways you can generate is 20, there is no upper limits to how many times you can do this. It all just depends on how many end crystals you feel like making. So here we are, we've got the Ender Dragon respawn cycle going. Let's take a quick look at what it does to this tower once the regeneration cycle starts. Did you see that? <laughs> the explosion happens and this tower completely regenerated. So we are free to mine out that obsidian once again. And that is <laughs> probably the most effective way of farming obsidian in large quantities. Although it does require you to fight a dragon every time. So it might not be your bag. <laughs> At this point, taking out these end crystals is child's play. Although each time you do the fight, the cages on top of these crystals will regenerate. So you've always got to break these open once again. But aside from that, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Taking out one side of the iron bars even just one of those corner blocks or alternatively <laughs> taking out the entire top of it and shooting on it from above is usually the right way to go. Now that's all the crystals taken care of so we are down to the second phase of our third dragon fight here. The dragon's breath is making it a little difficult to get to at this time but I think I've found the right angle. There we go and that is dragon fight number three. Total I mean not like dragon fight number three today but dragon fight number three of this world. 
And the great thing about having mending on all of my gear is that all of the durability that's taken off of my elytra from flying around here has actually been replenished by killing the dragon in the first place. So that's that's not too bad. But as we can see, yes, another gateway has generated this one a little bit further away from our first one, but still on that same range. So I reckon I might respawn the dragon one more time to see if we get a chance to generate one on this opposite side over here. Not going to bother farming any obsidian this time. We are just going to get straight on with the fight. And there we go. The crystals are now vulnerable again. Let's get to it. Oh, <laughs> I think I've, I think I angered an enderman there. Whoa, there we go. Got a little bit of a boost from the dragon as well. All right. Everyone's after me today, apparently. I have to be a little bit more careful here because I think one of those endermen actually broke my shield when I was fighting them earlier. So I do need to be a little bit more careful not to look at any endermen and not to take too much damage from the dragon itself. But you know what? I think we're doing pretty well here. The dragon will damage you and knock you back if you end up anywhere near its hitbox, so you do need to be a little bit careful of where you're flying, but <laughs> once it comes down to the bedrock portal, it is business as usual. And that is dragon number four taken care of. Let's see where we got ourselves a new end gateway. Is it going to be another one over there, or is it going to be elsewhere around here? I can't see it. Might be behind one of these other pillars then. There it is. Over there. Over there. Good stuff. Well, we turned, it turns out we angered another Enderman, so I need to get a little bit further away. But as you can see, they are starting to get a little bit more spread out. We've got one over here on this direction compared to the three over there. It looks like, yeah, we are, <laughs> we are definitely spawning them in different places, which is good stuff. Well, I'm going to collect a little bit of this XP. Hopefully that Enderman has forgotten about me, although I doubt it. Yeah, they tend to hold a grudge, these guys. I think he might even have gone through the end portal just then, which means he's probably spawned on our farm right about now. But we're going to head back to the farmhouse ourselves because we've got a little bit of business to take care of with this dragon's breath. Now this is an ingredient that I haven't really explained what it does in the past, but the idea is that it's here to make lingering potions, and you can do a lot of fun stuff with those. Now let's take, for example, this regeneration potion here. We're going to put that in this table. I think we maybe can even <laughs> we can even combine it with the, the night vision potions here as well. So once you've got some splash potions of any kind of effect of potion, pop a dragon's breath in the brewing stand and watch it bubble down. And it's about to turn into a lingering potion, which is a potion that the effect lingers on the ground in much the same way the dragon's breath does during the dragon fight, which is why dragon's breath is the ingredient required to make this effect happen. You'll notice that the lingering potions have a slightly different bottle shape. They kind of look like this and you end up with a lingering potion of regeneration. The effect doesn't last for as long because effectively what you're going to do is create a cloud of this potion effect that you can can walk into and replenish the effect whenever you like. Let's use a regeneration for the moment, although I don't really, I haven't taken a great deal of damage, so I don't really need the regeneration. Maybe I'll take some intentional damage. <laughs> How about that? Give me a second while I fly into a mountain or something. There we go. I've taken a little bit of intentional damage. My hunger bar has depleted to the point where I won't be able to naturally regenerate health all that much. So we can throw this lingering potion of regeneration on the ground and you can see the effects. It's going to create this lovely kind of cloud like that. You'll notice that I have a regeneration and the effect will keep replenishing as long as I'm within that cloud. Obviously the cloud dissipates after a short amount of time, but you'll notice I've now completely regenerated all of my health. So even though the effect doesn't last for very long, the cloud lingers there for a little while and you have the effect renewed as long as you're standing in it. Now the same goes for the night vision potion here. I'll throw that at a distance and as soon as I walk through the cloud, the effect activates and gives me night vision. Now the cloud isn't going to last for the entire duration of the lingering effect. It's going to dissipate quite quickly. But if you imagine you can throw one of those down in front of a group of players and everybody can just kind of walk through that and get their night vision effect instead of everybody having to gather around you to use a splash potion. And it means that you get the full strength of the effect instead of a splash potion maybe not dealing as much of the potion effect to the people who are in a slightly wider radius around you. So that's the use of lingering potions. They are quite a niche thing, which is why it's taken me this long to explain them. You don't tend to use them all that much <laughs> in survival games, but it is fun to create those effects with them. If you want to create some sort of localized particle effects if you want to create like a green poisonous cloud in a swamp or something like that either for a kind of 
just for the effect of it, for a fun kind of building touch or for a mini game that you're making for your server mates or something like that. It's always an option to use lingering potions for those kind of effects because they have potion effects as well as just the, the visual kind of thing of it. But anyway, that's actually going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I figured we'd respawn the dragon a few times and tell you guys about lingering potions. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe so you won't miss future videos, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.